us for joy or lust or right. Welcome to Sensible Secondhand Classics, a series where we look at nostalgic cars that you can buy between a budget of one and five thousand pounds that are over 15 years old. This is a 1972 Ford Granada 2.5 GXL automatic and yes it is the same one I drove from on a driver classic but there's different reasons for me driving this car than, uh, than her I think but is it any good should you care let's find out shall we so if you're watching this you'll uh, know that we've actually reached the five-year channel anniversary on Lloyd Vehicle Consulting. What an appropriate car to actually do it in. This is available to drive at the Great British Car Journey in Derbyshire and it is in superb condition. This car is worth a lot more than £5,000 I can assure you. So the Mark 1 Granada and Console were launched in 1972. They continued until 1975 for the console and 77 for the Granada, where it was replaced by the Mark II, which was very similar to this underneath, but came with some different engines and some very different styling and a very different interior. It replaced, um, for our market anyway, the um, Mark IV Ford Zephyr Zodiac Executive, and in um, Germany, where a lot of these were made, it replaced um, the larger Ford Taunus models. There were loads of Taunus models, some of which were sort of Cortina size, some of which were a lot larger, sort of Zephyr Zodiac size. So, uniting the two companies, Ford of Britain and Ford of Germany, sort of to cover the European market together, and along with some other additional markets. The basic engine available in these, in this country anyway, was a two litre V4 Essex unit generating 92 horsepower when the car was launched. That was later replaced by a two litre Pinto engine, which is a vastly superior unit, an overhead cam. Um, and we have driven some cars with Pinto units before, and they are really, really good. So generating 99 horsepower. The ones though that most of you will probably be interested in will be the the uh, 2.5 and 3 litre Essex V6 engine developing either 118 as in this 2.5 example or 138 horsepower in the 3 litre. Obviously you know <laughs> the one you want to think about when you think about a Mark 1 Granada and console is the most famous one from the Sweeney NHK 295M which is a 74 console 3000 GT in this exact colour but no vinyl roof like this one. Steering in this feels very good. The steering wheel is very thin. Um, the uh, later Mark II had a very different type of steering wheel. It feels just about the right size. I feel like I am Billy Murray from Stoppo Driver, one of the quintessential episodes of the first series of the Sweeney. Um, although I'm not a three litre and I'm not got a manual gearbox in this, it just feels like I'm tearing round that railway freight yard in Nine Elves and Battersea and uh, it feels all a lot better for it. At least I haven't got uh, Dennis Waterman and John Ford swearing at me. I remember first seeing this car when I first visited the museum in 2021 and wondering whether it would actually go onto uh, the Drive Dad's car fleet and it has. Obviously many of you would have seen the uh, I drove a classic video on this car but uh, I've been interested in these for a very very long time. The pilot for the Sweeney that was filmed I think in 1974 was called Regan and actually in that particular um, television film, it was a 90 minute television film, John Four drives an early Mark I Granada automatic like this. It's not um, a GXL, it is a 2.5, it's just called the Granada automatic. But it does sort of remind me of that. 
Of course, the car used in the Sweeney for the first couple of series was a console 3000 GT in this colour. No vinyl roof on that one, and actually the consoles look a little bit different from these. The basic idea behind having two names was that the Granada Television Company were sort of threatening to sue them for using the Granada name. So if they badged the lower trim version of these as consoles and the higher trim versions as Granadas, they had an option to badge them all as consoles if the uh, court case went a particular way. But by 1975, when the facelift for these came in, it uh, was decided that actually there were no grounds for the Granada Television Company to be suing Ford, and so all cars were badged as Granadas. So we've got the early pre-facelift look about this car. The consoles had a different grill from this. The GXL was the absolute top of the range. I gather from speaking to Mr. Coleman, who is an expert on Mark 1 and Mark 2 Granadas, that all the GXLs came with automatic transmission. You could get a 3 litre, of course, as well as the 2.5 um, SX V6 of this country. In other markets, uh, other engines were used, uh, such as the Cologne V6s. But uh, the car is stunning, particularly now we've had a break in the weather, in comparison with earlier on, where the weather was absolutely terrible and I was taking out a Bentley 8. Um, this looks fantastic. The steering wheel alone in a Mark 1 Granada is worth a lot of money. I mean, they're worth almost a £1,000 in some cases, actually. So nice and easy to get in. Unlike the Mark II um, Granada, we haven't actually got loads of stalks. We've actually only got the one, and that's it. <laughs> Which is crazy. A lot of the other controls, lighting controls and things, are on switches. We've got a load of um, gauges. The ammeter and the... Um, Oil pressure gauge are just here. Speedometer and rev counter, because the GXL, we get everything. Weirdly, the clock is right over here, just over there on the left-hand side. Motor radio period, correct radio, and um, very simple heater controls. I think that's the uh, fan speed there. Hot and cold in the direction of the air, and that's all you get. Cigar lighter, it was a very long cigar lighter, isn't it? What the ashtray is, it's probably in there. Yep, there's the ashtray. No door pockets in this, and acres and acres and acres of vinyl. No, uh, I, don't, I don't think these are leather, they might be leather actually, I'm not sure. Um, but lots of vinyl, don't need to use the handbrake because it's got an automatic gearbox, three speed unit in this car. I've actually got a cubby in there. Be careful of this plastic because a lot of these sort of interior bits are just not available anymore at all. Choke is there. We've got a, a manual choke on this uh, on this car. I think those are for yeah the headlamps, just the uh, switches. And the wiper speed is uh, that one on there. Nice thin rimmed steering wheel. Lots and lots and lots of fake wood because this is the 1970s and therefore that's what you must have. Nice and comfortable, but no headrest or head restraints. Got a manual sunroof, but I am not touching that. I don't want to break it. Yeah, it feels really good. Just so reminiscent of a certain era. And I, I'd keep thinking about watching the Sweeney and seeing all these cars in that. Other Mark One Granadas, apart from, of course, the Console 3000 GT, used in the series, principally were... Um, a silver facelift 3 liter S, which was um, NWC301P, and uh, the later one was RHJ997R, which was a very late uh, Mark I Granada, I think 76 or 77 registered, and actually that appeared right into the fourth series because the production blocks of the Sweeney didn't actually match with the um, kind of um, broadcast blocks, they sort of mixed up two of the series, so by the, by the end of the fourth season broadcast, it was a mixture of episodes from the third and fourth filming blocks. That's why you end see the Mark 1 in one week and then Mark 2 the next week. So, I've got the key for that, but uh, yes, nice panel. I've seen these panels around quite a lot. Loads of sort of chrome. 
just right in terms of the styling. It's, it's a very handsome looking car, actually. Very much more so, in my opinion, than the Mark IV Zephyr Zodiac that came before. Right, we better get this key and have a look in the boot, I suppose. So, spare wheel on the side. This car is uh, running on 14 inch wheels. It's just got the uh, wheel trims on this. Later, um, things like the Granada gear, the facelift ones, I think are alloy wheels actually. They look really good. But yeah, quite a, a high load lip, typical of the era. But yeah, fit a fair amount of stuff in here. If you wanted more stuff, of course, you could just buy Granada Estates. Those were available as well. I just love the look of this very early Granada from first year of production. I think it's wonderful. And also just seeing the silver on black plates, which are period correct, actually, for them. It's just fantastic. Right, before I start talking about utter nonsense views, not that I already haven't, let's uh, have a look under the bonnet. You could uh, have these Mark 1s made either in Dagenham or uh, in um, Cologne, Germany. As you can see on here, we've got um, the uh, plate in many different languages. The Mark 1 Granadas were made in Dagenham until 1976, actually. The Mark 2s were not made over there at all. So we've got the uh, 2.5 Essex V6 engine in this car, generating 118 horsepower. Gear-driven engine, I think these are. Certainly the later Cologne ones, uh, but a bit of the Mark 2s, and uh, in other countries, you get them in the Mark 1s as well, were gear-driven. Maintenance isn't very difficult. Loads of room. Actually, we've got power steering in this as well, which is which is nice. Um, some of the, the earlier consoles didn't get power steering. Similar underneath, of course, to the Mark II. Uh, the uh, Mark I and Mark II did share the same chassis. Nice to see a, a, a big <laughs> brake servo, not a remote servo, on the right-hand side. Yeah. See what people love these cars ever so much. And uh, they still very much love today, of course, not just because of the Sweeney, but uh, because of things like um, people take them to shows, some of whom have used Mark 1 and Mark 2 Granadas for years as uh, banger racers. Probably one of the best banger cars of all time, obviously. Most people who have these as bangers, they have very bad examples they take out to the track, and really nice, shiny examples like this that they display of a show circuit, so they own into preservation as well, even if some of the most rotten cars do still go out from time to time. Right, let's uh, go for another drive, shall we? This is um, just an absolute delight, isn't it? Excellent. Actually, before we go out for a drive, we should... Uh, Get in the back, shouldn't we? No electric windows, actually, despite the fact that it's a GXL. Plenty of room in here for four or five people, particularly if you're Dennis Waterman, you're, you're sitting behind John Four, which is what would have happened in the, uh, in the series, because uh, the skipper sits here. The driver, whether it's um, Bill Murray or sorry, Billy Murray or, or someone else would be there. You don't really see um, Regan or Carter driving the um, Granadas much in the series. You see it far more in the Sweeney pilot where the very early um, Mark I Granada, which is supposed to be Regan's personal car, is driven by him. So yeah, you sink into the seats, loads of headroom, more fake wood. So I think this is probably vinyl seating. And yeah, it just feels very luxurious. But so much leg room in here as well. It's surprising, really. And there's your old seat belts as well, because I don't like fixed seat belts, viewers. I do not like fixed seat belts at all. Shut it!
So to drive, it, it's it's superb. Um, suspension is actually quite compliant. There's not a lot of body roll in comparison with a lot of cars of this era. Certainly if you got out of Austin Westminster or something like that and got into one of these, you'd notice a lot of difference. The engine in this one has been a bit temperamental today, but actually it's settled down now and it, it's got a sort of muted growl to it, like the uh, Capri 3 litre S's did in, in the Professionals. And I'm really just enjoying it, actually just wafting along and treating it gently because we're on a private site here um, at Great British Car Journey. You can't really go particularly fast, but you don't need to drive like Billy Murray in Stoppo Driver to experience this car. You can just sort of waft along and think about, you know, the sort of average people who would have earned these, apart from the fictional detectives, who would have used these as an sort of upper management car. And certainly, very advanced for time. Some people say the Mark 1 and Mark 2 Granada were the best cars that Ford of Europe ever made. And yeah, there's a lot of grounds for saying that. I've certainly really enjoyed this. I think I probably prefer the Mark II myself. That's more kind of the sort of thing that I remember when I was growing up. And also the Mark IIs are more prominent in the Professionals, which is a series that I think is even better than the Sweeney. Um, but certainly if you want to get sort of up close and personal with one of these, it, they're not, there's not many around. A lot of them were bang a race, a lot of them get scrapped. Um, and actually, you know, speak to the people who still drive these and they will say that they are superb cars and the ones that are in preservation are likely to stay in preservation for quite some time and I totally understand that. The uh, loaded trim levels and the options you could get on these would be the reasons why Ford was so good at marketing and why it just stays in the collective memory for so many people and uh, 51 years after this car was made it still actually feels superb let's uh, look viewers at some uh, mark one console and granada trim levels so we had the l the xl the gxl there was also the 3000 GT for the console. And you could get a, a rally pack, I think, as well for these. There was a base um, Granada as well, just like that one from the Regan uh, Sweeney Pilot, 2.5 automatic, that one. And uh, after 1974, you could get the gear. And then later on, you could get the uh, S, which is uh, most agreeable. Power steering was made standard on these cars in 1973. And I think uh, that would have been quite a good option to have so viewers um, should you consider a Mark 1 Ford Granada or a console with your hard-earned budget up to £5,000 as a nostalgic classic I have seen a um, Mark 1 Granada Coupe a left-hand drive one in GL specification going through an auction soon for an estimate of about £5,000 but really a nice one like this is going to be worth like £15,000. So we're sort of exceeding the budget somewhat. Uh, but this is the four year the five year anniversary of the channel. So, you know, I hope you'll allow me a little indulgence in this. And uh, am I disappointed by this car having wanted to drive one for probably 20 years? Um, no, not really. It's it's superb. <laughs> you can see why you know that Ford thought this was a fantastic fit for the Houston film Sweeney series, and also why people love these to this day. Anyway, thank you to Ian and Riley for helping me to uh, achieve a dream today at Great British Car Journey. Thank you all so much indeed for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a comment below, and uh, we shall see you again soon for more reasonably priced nostalgic motoring.